Are you staying too silent in your relationship? Because I find many women in many settings are truly not using their voice. So I want to unpack that with you guys, explore it, and let's dive in. Hello, and welcome back to Motherhood Interrupted. I am your host, Kimberly Lovey. You guys, welcome, welcome, welcome back for all of my existing listeners. And for those of you guys that are new to the podcast, welcome, come on in. You are in good company and your ears and your active listening and comments are important. So thank you so much for joining me here today. Now, I want to tell you guys up front that we are in the middle of Hurricane Hillary. So if you hear some rain pounding in the background, that's exactly what's going on. And I'm hoping that things don't get too crazy here. Although nowadays, it feels like you never know if things are going to be sensationalized in the news, or if there's some validity to it. Now, I will tell you with respect to Hurricane Hillary, one of my friends is an avid surfer and they are redoing their beach house here in Ventura County. And he was telling me that a friend of his is very well connected in the weather world. And essentially that person said to him that hurricanes can kind of just go east and die out or they can go crazy and take a different turn and they're just very unpredictable. So that was not much help. That was not comforting information whatsoever. But I'll just say I hope everyone stays safe out there, stay off the roads. London and I this morning were able to get up and get out for 20 minutes on a quick, brisk little walk and then it started drizzling. Um, Then I popped out to go grab a Starbucks and really needed my oat milk. By the way, if you don't have a great drink at Starbucks, I feel like it can be very overwhelming. I'm going to give you my favorite one, which is it's not too strong. It's not too just intense in general, but it's a great afternoon pickup if you need one or just like for me, mid mid morning pickup this morning. Too many kids, too much going on. Um, But okay, here it is. I love a venti iced matcha tea latte with oat milk. Because for me, the milk for some reason at Starbucks always upsets my stomach. I don't know why that is. It's super weird. And then I get it with sugar-free vanilla. So that is the jam. Just letting you guys know. If you need a Starbucks drink, let me know. If you try it, it is truly good. And sometimes I'll even sprinkle in cinnamon. Although I just realized just now that I forgot to do that this morning. Um, so yes. Yeah, so after that, we were able to quickly, we, me, me, myself and I, we were supposed to come home and podcast, but instead we ran over to pavilions and grabbed a bunch of food and some of the shelves were emptying out and I was having a little bit of like COVID flashbacks. I'm not going to lie. Uh, one of my girlfriends yesterday said that they filled up their car tank full of gas and they were stocking up and I just felt totally unprepared. Um, so yes, we're going to see how this goes. I did not stock up and fill my tanks with gas and I hope that's not a big mistake, but I think we'll be fine. Um, okay. So today, today, my friends, I actually want to talk to you about your relationship. So how this came about was a girlfriend of mine was telling me that they, her and her husband were getting a divorce and she moved out. And she moved out for a little bit and it was really hard because, you know, starting over is not simple. She doesn't have kids. And it just, it really opened up a great discussion between us that I'm like, we need to podcast about this. I'm not bringing her on for her privacy, but I just felt like this is the kind of conversation we need to be having. And so for me, uh, I feel like, I feel like a lot of us, and I'm sure you guys are much like me, and I'm not sure where you are in your journey, but for me, I can say when I was younger especially, I would find myself in relationships and I would perpetually be disappointed. And I would get frustrated with my boyfriend or you know, just feel like a total lack of compassion or thoughtfulness or just general knowing. And I came to realize that I do believe women are much more intuitive, as we all kind of know, and I especially feel like I'm super intuitive. And 
with men, or at least in my current relationship, I finally was able to put together the pieces that they really just don't have that intuition for the most part. Now, some men are better at this than others. And I know this is a very broad generalization, but by and large, we know what to do and the men need to be told. And I don't mean that to, I don't mean to say that in a way that's like um, disparaging or, you know, what's the word I'm trying to think of? like where you're undermining your spouse. I don't mean it in a negative way. I mean it in the most positive way. And that's the whole point of why I want to talk about this is because I think women, we associate using our voice or stating our needs with being a bitch, being condescending, um, you know, all these just like negative, horrible terms. And there's a big stigma around that. And I think as a result, we end up suppressing our feelings and our hopes and our needs and our wants. And to me, as I was talking to my friend, she was she's in therapy and so is her husband. And she said she feels she was she's realizing she was not good at expressing, like explicitly stating her needs. And I said to her, Well, I'm really glad you had that realization because it's really not fair for us as women to have these very high expectations of our partners without telling them. And it sounds so obvious, but it's it's really something that we don't do well. And so here's an example. He massages her feet. And then sometimes he'll use that as like foreplay, right? And for her, she's like, I love that he massages my feet after a hard day. And, you know, she's on her feet a lot for her job. But I hate when he advances. Like, I'm just trying to relax. And I said to him, I, and I said to her, I said, did you ever tell him that? And she's like, no, I, I don't. I never said that. I'm like, well, why not? She's like, well, you know, I don't want to hurt his feelings and turn him down. And I'm like, I know, but in not telling him that this really like turns you off completely, you're not giving him a chance to figure out a different, better way with you, you know, and you're actually sitting here like resenting him and like disgusted by him almost because he's just, you know, hitting the wrong button, right? And I'm using that as a very tangible, clear example where it doesn't really matter what it is. I think women need to stop suppressing our voice and our feelings because why? If you're like me, like I was starting to say earlier, I used to suppress my emotions a lot. And this would be true of my all kinds of my relationships because I thought, you know, because I didn't want to quote unquote be mean or I didn't want to be the bitch or I didn't want to cause problems. And then what would happen is I would at some point snap because I was just holding in so many feelings. And I think the key to me and Brian's relationship where I really reflect on why is this relationship so much better than all of my previous relationships is because he is able to tell me, I'm very literal, he says. I He wants me to be as explicit and blunt. And with that, sometimes... I'll say something and I'll be annoyed, but at least I'm telling him and then he has a chance to react or respond or digest it. Like here's an example. Um, And this is where I think fighting can be good. And this is my own personal belief system. Fighting could be good if you can fight respectfully and really hear each other and then move on. And I feel like that's what Brian and I do really well. And I do not hold on to anger. I do not suppress my feelings in my relationship. And honestly, I don't think I'd be able to survive having three kids, a marriage, a house, a job, a podcast, you know, friends, all the things if I was suppressing my feelings all the time. I just, I think that it's too much of a weight on somebody. And I I think a lot of us are in that situation. So if this is you, you are definitely in the right place. And the entire point of this episode is to set you free and get you to realize that there is a gray area. There is a happy medium of being able to express yourself without exploding. And so the way that kind of, I'll just use me and Brian, the way that that kind of um, unfolds in my relationship is like the other night, for example. So let me finish that thought. The way it unfolds in my relationship is I express things as they come up, but not when I'm in, I try not to do it in the moment. I'm not perfect at that, but I really try. So here's an example. We had gone out to dinner with friends and Brian and I were a little bit overserved. He was more overserved than I was at this point in the dinner, which was fine. It was a safe 
fine environment. It was not a wild setting. We were not driving. It was fine. Um, But what happened was he started to say stuff about me, like as a mom, that he thought wasn't a big deal. And I took real offense to it. And I started to get incredibly upset. And I did the like kick him under the table thing. And he just did not get it. And he didn't say, hey, why are you kicking me? Someone asked me that when I was talking to one of my friends about this. No, he did not do that, thankfully. But he kept at it. And I was just, I was so upset. And I'm like, you're making me look really bad right now. And these people are our friends, but they don't really see me all that much with my kids. So it's not like my best friend that I'd be like, not as worried, you know, like these are people that I feel like we're still getting to know. And so basically, I was super upset. When we came home, I knew that he had had a bit of a bit of a bad night because he was a little bit overserved, and you know he's not a huge drinker. Um, and so I was like, as much as I really wanted to bring it up at that moment, I knew for sure it was not the right moment. So it was hard for me to like fester, but I also needed to collect my thoughts. So then the whole day, next the next day goes by, and we're with our kids and so I'm not going to say anything and finally when the kids go to bed I had had enough time to like really piece together my thoughts clearly and I'm glad that I didn't just like have like word vomit and just emotionally like scream at him like what were you doing you made me look bad like it wasn't just that it was more than that there was more thought and hurt behind it that I would not have otherwise realized if I had just kind of knee-jerk reaction explained how I felt in that moment. Um, And I came to be able to sit down with him for like a good hour. And at first he's like, well, I don't need to impress my friends. I'm like, well, I don't need to impress my friends either. But at the same time, it's more than that. It's not about impressing people. It's about the fact that if this is the way you really feel about me as a mother, well, one, that does make me look like a bad mom, number one. And number two, if you really feel like that, like that really hurts. Like you're telling me you feel like of all the things that I do, and this is where it was like more deep than I had really realized at first as I was processing it for that 24 hours. I was like, wait a minute. It's not even about the friends at that point. It's about you. Like you're picking out something that you don't think is great about my parenting, which by the way, it's, it's okay that we're not perfect parents. Okay. Number one, but number two, it's like, It hurt me. I'm like, of all that I give to this family, birthing the three kids, you know, trying to balance all that I do, keeping up the house, pouring into our children, you know, nurturing them and everything that we do as mothers for kids, feeding them good food and all their activities, their social circle, their emotional wellness, all the things that we pour, we pour into our children. Like, this is what you have to say about your wife as a mother, like that really hurts me, honestly. And, and it actually makes me feel like I'm, I'm not, that I'm not being seen by you. Like you don't actually see me for who I am. If this is what you're chalking up my parenting to be, this is what you're, this is all you have to say about my parenting. Like that, that really hurts. It feels like you don't even see me for who I am. And frankly, if that's true, I don't think I should be with you because I need to be with someone that deserves me. I mean, you guys can tell I was super worked up, right, to say all of that, but it was honest. It was all of my honest feelings. And I'm only sharing this because it is the ugly truth of a marriage and having kids and being in situations that, you know, your husband might say something that really bothers you. And instead of me sitting there like so angry and so hurt and upset, we worked through it. And he was like, look, I was overserved. Number one, it was not a great night for me. Number two, I do see you. And that is not at all how like he, you know, he was able to realize like how hurtful it really was and why it was hurtful. It it went so far beyond some superficial perception from friends. Like it's, it's so much more than that. Right. Um, and so we had a really good conversation for like an hour about it, you know? And I'm like, the thing is, Brian is like, these people don't know me that well. They're like, well, we no, they know you're such an amazing mother. I'm like, but they don't. And that's the point. That's the point. Like you're making assumptions that people know me better than they really do. And I pride myself on working hard to be a great mom as do, by the way, so many of the parents out there, not just mothers, so many of us, you know, it's hard. It's, it's I don't care what anyone says, being a mom's hard. And being a dad's hard too. Um, And dealing with the moms, I'm sure is hard, right? So 
Anyway, um, I'm just telling you that as an example to illustrate the way that Brian and I are able to navigate. And I'm, I'm not trying to say, oh, we're so perfect because believe me, we're definitely not. But I'm able to synthesize my thoughts and use my voice and my relationship. And I'm trying to share with you guys that there's nothing too small that doesn't deserve to be heard especially if you find yourself suppressing that emotion and being angry at your partner, especially if you're getting to the point where you're like, I want to separate from this person because they just make me like icky and they make me feel turned off. And it's like, I mean, starting over is really, really hard. And that's what my friend ended up telling me. She's like, look, I don't want to usurp my whole life and start over. Like, we actually have a great life together. We're friends. I'm like, I I understand. I get that. And I think she was sort of afraid of my judgment. And I'm like, look, number one, I'm not here to judge you. But number two, like, I can understand, like, starting over is hard. And if your guy has most of the things and you just have some communication issues, I do really respect that you're able to own up to your part in it and to get used to building that muscle of communicating because it feels really foreign. Like when you first start openly communicating your feelings, it's scary. Like it, it feels like you're naked in a room. But um, I think that women need to stop feeling bad about having feelings and we love so hard and so deep and we care so much, especially about our spouse and our families. And if something hurts you, you deserve to speak up you deserve to be heard and acknowledged and you deserve to not be made to feel like your feelings don't matter or that you're being a bitch or that you're being a bad partner like and by the way if anyone's doing that that's gaslighting and then you know right there that is not a healthy relationship and frankly if my partner started doing that I would say you know you're not acknowledging my feelings this is not okay I need to be seen and heard in this relationship in order for me to feel like I'm in a healthy relationship and that I'm being loved and supported emotionally and that I'm safe, you know? So there's ways to overcome if a spouse starts flipping the script on you. Um, I actually was listening to an amazing podcast about this where there was like an actual professional (laughs) in the room and it was Kelly Ripa's podcast and she had a relationship expert on there. The woman has her own show, um, Love Island maybe or something. I don't really know. I don't watch those kinds of shows. But one of the episodes she had, um, they did talk about, well, what if your spouse starts flipping it on you? Like, are they gaslighting you? Is that unhealthy? And surprisingly, the therapist said it is natural for your spouse to get defensive because they want to see themselves as good. And so her advice was to, as you are addressing an issue with your spouse, to hold the image of them being good in your mind, like all their positive qualities, and then start the the conversation so that you're speaking to them respectfully and lovingly rather than with the anger and the, you know, being hot headed, because obviously it's going to be harder to connect with each other when you're, you know, overly upset. Um, So yeah, I hope that this is helpful to you guys. Um, If you have made progress in your relationships. I'd love to hear more about kind of what's worked for you and how you and your spouse work through issues. I think a lot of women are afraid to come forward and talk about issues with their spouse. But to me, the number one, aside from trust, the number one most important thing in mine and Brian's relationship is communication. So because we're able to have full communication and I feel 100% safe emotionally to say anything I need to. And I've learned to be able to collect myself and say things very directly. You can, you say it directly, but firmly and, um, you know, not necessarily attacking that person, but also don't sugarcoat it. Like be explicit, be clear, be exactly what you need, whether it's something with your intimacy or, parenting or whatever the issue might be, finances, being direct with your spouse, like don't leave it in a gray area and murky for them to infer. Like, no, that's that's not what this is. You have to learn to be clear and very specific and take them, take each item as they come up, like as each issue arises, don't wait three weeks. It's too late. So 
I think it's always a work in process, but I will say for me, it really has been like a muscle that I've been able to build. And now I have no problem telling Brian if something's not working for me and being very clear, I'm not embarrassed. Um, it can be anything and he, he will receive my feelings and vice versa. And he'll, we have discourse and sometimes we do have to kind of fight it out a little bit, but at the end, we always walk away feeling like we hurt each other. We're respected. We love each other. And like, okay, we learn something about each other, you know, and truly that is the reason why I think I can continue to be in a relationship with somebody with so many other outside stresses that come up as a parent and a spouse and all the things that go on. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Thank you for listening in. Please, please share the podcast. Um, Send it to your friends. If you know of a friend that's in a relationship that could be struggling or maybe could benefit because you know that they suppress their feelings, which I know so many of us do, um, does not make them a bad person. But please just give your friends the chance to listen to this and um, rate us five stars on Apple Podcast. Find me on on Instagram at Kimberly Lovey. Follow me, DM me, tag me, screenshot the episode, all the goodness. And thank you guys so much for listening and have a great rest of your day. All right, that is it for today. Now, as you know, some of our best conversations actually happen after the show. So I want you to find me on Instagram at Kimberly Lovey and let me know your thoughts about today's show. You can screenshot this episode and let us know what your biggest takeaway was and tag me at Kimberly Lovey and we can share it on our stories. I will see you again, same time, same place next week.